Hey Virgos, welcome back to my channel. This is Kelly from House of Virgo. This is a Virgo channel only. Virgo Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Some of the messages may or may not resonate. Take what fits, leave the rest. If you want to get a personal reading from me, there's a link below in the description box. Just click that link. That will take you right over to my booking site where I am running a special from now until the end of February. So make sure you check that out. It's $50 off a 30 minute phone call reading. You guys, you can also join my new uh, spiritual community. It's um, called Oversoul. It's a forum. The link is in the description box below as well. It's oversoul.space. Join, join, join. The registration is free. You can become a member and there's all kinds of topics. It's a bulletin board. So it's a spiritual community. So go check that out. All right, let me let me not talk so much here, Virgo. How are you guys? Hello, everybody in the chat. I hope your glow up is going well. I got my glow up on. Um, all right, you guys, let's see. What are the love messages from today going through February into March? What does Virgo need to know? What kind of drama is going on in Virgo's life? It's always something. All right, let's see. Hold on a minute. I need to bring in the, the, the energy here. Give me a second. Okay, what does Virgo need to know? What are Virgo's messages? Virgo sun, moon, rising, or Venus? Virgo's love. Hello, everybody. Virgo's messages. Okay, let's see. All right. Ooh, giving somebody the axe. Virgo, harsh, harsh, harsh. A breakup, separation, stopping the pattern, breaking the cycle, silent treatment, and abandonment. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. I don't know if that's you. Maybe you're giving that to somebody, but there's the axis coming down because Cupid's arrows is coming in. Some of you have met somebody and that's given you that inspiration to end a past relationship or to end something, to break up, to have some kind of separation. You've got love is coming in here. Some of you, it's just a message that you put the ox down. You said, that's it. You're tired of abandonment or being abandoned. You're tired of silent treatments. Uh, a lot of you I'm just hearing okay you're gonna give me the silent treatment well I'm gonna give it right back and you're not chasing anybody okay um, there's a surprise invitation or meeting coming up for you here what Virgo? all right let's see what else is going on paradise this must be just like living in paradise oh my gosh I really feel Virgo that you're on your way. You are. You're on your way. Um, you may not be feeling it right now, and that's all right. Don't worry. Um, some of you are going to find this hard to believe because this is an ace, or the eight of wands energy. This is like somebody coming in after an axe moment, okay? After something has ended, after a breakup or their separation. This could be love bombing energy. Somebody's coming in with that happiness. You know playfulness want to uh, enjoying each other want to spend time together that kind of thing right so you know there's a breakup there's a stopping the pattern there's something ending that's it it's done not moving forward anymore and then boom here comes some communication here comes some messages super quick good news love love bombing <laughs> and i don't mean that in like the negative term like you know with the the ism. I'm not talking about the ism. I'm not seeing the ism here. Okay. But I am seeing symptoms, symptoms of an ism. So you just play that out however you like. Okay. Um, that feeling of like feeling good, feeling like you're on vacation, feeling like you're in paradise, like the sun is shining down, sipping some drinks. Maybe some of you live in a city called paradise. Okay. Um, let's see. What's the tarot here going on? Okay. So we have the the Knight of Swords. Somebody coming in quick and fast. Very assertive energy coming in here. Okay. That's air. Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, okay. We have the Eight of Pentacles. Oh, some of you are meeting somebody at work. This could be a work thing or somewhere where you're either you're building something it starts off like a date or a friendship somebody coming in traveling to you you meet somebody while you're oh for some of you this is like 
the delivery person that comes in and has you sign that paper at your work or that little computer thing, okay, for some of you and asks you out on a date. <laughs> um, but there's definitely a connection being made. Somebody coming in from out of town or going on a work trip of some sort, coming to where you're, you're working. All right, if you work in an office or some type of a building or something, or you have like, you're at a seminar and this person shows up at the seminar and you know, it's like, boom, you start talking, you go out, you meet for drinks or you have happy hour or um, you have dinner together and like love blossoms here, getting to know each other. Two people who find out that they're on the same page, okay? I feel like a lot of you just, you know, you gave the ax to something. Some of you just recently did it. Some of you did it today, I'm hearing. Uh, you like, you legit broke up with somebody or you told somebody, no, no more, not doing it, don't want it, this isn't good enough. I'm not looking for just friendship. Um, I want something more, I want a romantic partnership, a romantic relationship. And so you might've been in some kind of pattern with someone where they just kind of kept coming back and they were just kind of stringing you along or leading you on um, because this person didn't want to be abandoned, you know, but they weren't ready to commit. That's what I feel with the ax here. Um, so there was like a pattern here of silent treatment. There was a pattern of breaking up and getting back together. There was a pattern of feeling abandoned. And then because the abandonment became so strong, getting um, fearful of that and uh, fearful of never connecting again and then reconnecting again, but it not going anywhere. Okay. And I feel like that somebody brought the anvil down. Somebody brought the ax down on this, whether it was years ago, months ago, days ago, or today, it just was like, that's it. No more. And there's love coming in here. Okay. And I love it. Okay. The end of a struggle here, 10 of wands energy. So somebody's feeling stressed. Um, there's an energy here, of just complete exhaustion. Um, burned the freak out. Somebody is burned out. Okay. Um, I see you guys really putting an effort doing your work. You're working every single day. You're not being distracted. You're whatever you're putting your effort in your, whatever you're doing at this time of your life, you're like doing it day after day after day, which is really good. Okay. But I'm just picking up like there's this completely burned out, stressful coming to the end of it. The struggle coming out to the end with new communication coming in some but also like this is more like self-talk okay this is more like clarity and thought clarity and thinking okay new inspiration about um overcoming some conflicts or whatever issues there were in the past this is like having a victory this is like a win okay like getting clarity the fog lifts the clouds clear and it's like being able to see things for exactly how they are, not for how maybe you want them to be or you thought they would be. And this is just like the general energy all around you, okay? It, I'm just feeling like some of you are going to be in this place where you're like, oh, wow, this is this is crystal clear to me now. I get it. I, I totally get it. It's crystal clear. There's nothing here that I've missed. There's nothing here that I am not sure of any longer. Okay, I, you know, I feel like a lot of you just came to the end of this hum humongous struggle and, you know, you brought all the kindling, you brought all the wood and you laid it down before somebody and you said, this is the deal and here's the X, I'm chopping it all down now, right? So you definitely have new love coming in here, okay? You have new love, you have a new start, a new beginning, the Two of Cups always speaks to me about that romantic love partnership proposal marriage something two people who are of like mind okay um <laughs> it's so funny i have never seen this before but i have to show you <laughs> look at this do you see right here down the corner there's a foot and it's kind of cut off above the ankle i feel like a lot of you um your person you know, whoever your person was, was they were like a statue. They didn't move. They just stood there and they were just like cemented in the ground and they were just like stagnant. Statues don't move. You could see them. You could touch them. 
but like there's no movement with this person and I feel like a lot of you just cut this person <laughs> you know how I always say um cut your leg off below your knee and prove to me I feel like a lot of you just said you know what screw it I'll cut your leg off and just push you out the door I'm done with it because I'm meeting somebody new somebody new so I kind of feel like um you just, you just, you know, Virgo, I feel like you just left somebody standing there. And I'm not laughing at somebody's hurt and pain if somebody's hurt. I'm not doing that. I just feel like at some point, like you got to call time on things, Virgo. You can, you just cannot spend, you know, I have this like analogy. I was just thinking like a lot of you give paychecks out to people who just show up to work right they just show up they don't do anything and you're all out there like okay it's the end of the week here's your pay you know and this person's like really that are you saying all i have to do is just show up for this relationship i don't have to do anything i don't have to put any effort in i can just stand here and you're like yeah yeah yeah, that's enough yeah that's all i need you to do i just need you to be there that's it and then you're paying this person and this person and then you're like getting mad at them because they're really not putting any effort well why should they you're 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 constantly like you're saying to this person like here's the job the job position is uh, I need you to work and I need you to put in the effort because all relationships take work and effort and um, then they show up and they sign up and then they just stand there and they lean against the wall and watch you do all the work and then you're like okay well it's the end of the week here's your paycheck like what the fuck are you doing stop that <laughs> a lot of you have you're just like because some of you are so afraid to make this person do any effort or work or say anything that you were afraid if you did, then they were going to quit. But so what if they quit? They weren't working anyway. So what have you got to lose? <laughs> you know what I mean? They weren't, they weren't putting effort in. Bye bye. You'll pay somebody else who's going to come in. But you know what I mean? I use that as an analogy, obviously. But I mean, there are rewards for work, for putting in the effort. You put the effort into the relationship, there's rewards that are given for that. You know, unless, I mean, I don't know if it's you or just this person. You just allowed them to keep staying because you didn't, you were so afraid that they would leave if you demanded anything. But that's why a lot of you stayed in these relationships and a lot of you are blaming the other person but you know what i don't know that that's even fair i know i'm not speaking to everybody but if you don't demand things then you can't bitch about what you get if you don't demand that somebody show up a particular way in your life and this is the the role they got to play in your life which a healthy role then you can't be mad if if you didn't demand that and they acted that way because not everybody's going to come in healthy. You know, if you're in a toxic relationship and you stayed, you were part of the problem. You were part of the problem, right? If you got out of it, well, now it's their problem. If you've risen and you've arrived and you've ascended and you're getting yourself in this place now, I see here where, you know what? You called time. You were brave. You took a, you took a, a bold, yet you had Virgo some of you i know you did some of you you had a real chess move a real chess move and you just said that's it that's it checkmate i'm out that's it. it it doesn't matter you can raise your standards at any time if you didn't have good standards back then that's fine let it go raise them now and put yourself in a better position because you deserve better and make a demand Especially if this is the females on the males, you need to make demands. You need to say to this person, hey, I need you to rise to the highest challenge. I want to see what you're made of, and I'm going to put the challenges in front of you. And if you can't, you can't uh, jump these hurdles, if you can't do these things, and bec because I want you, I see that you have potential to be the best. I see you can be the best. If you can't champion this person to be the best that they can be for you, then that's not your person and if you champion them and they don't come forward and they don't take those you know they don't take those own hurdles in their life make those jumps without your encouragement this isn't somebody this is a lazy passive person who's got a self-entitlement issue and thinks they can do whatever they want and you've got to go 
you have to go you have to keep building you have to keep rising so let's talk about this new person coming in here okay you have the emperor perfect this is what you want this is somebody who comes in with a leadership role they take responsibility they're accountable they're above bo board they're honest they're in confidence they they command they don't demand they command they say it like it is they mean what they say People look up to the emperor. People come to the emperor. People ask the emperor for advice. They ask for permission sometimes. The emperor is like the CEO, the highest executive. The emperor is close to God. You know, this is somebody, but not in a bad way, because if he's in reverse, then yeah, it'd be very narcissistic. So Aries energy. For some, there's an Aries coming into your life. And Virgo, that's a good match for you, generally, for the most part, depending on other placements. But this person is coming in. This is the this is like the emperor embodies all the kings. Okay, so what do I mean by that? They have the boldness and the charm and the courage of a fire sign. This person is um, is very strategic in thought. An emperor would be like um, what do you want to call it? Like um, I don't know, highest ranking military. Okay, um, the the emperor embodies the elements of the pentacles. Okay, of earth, someone who's resourceful and is a wise leader, good with money, a good investor, solid, practical, down to earth. But also in the King of Cups energy, this is someone who's supportive, tolerant, empathetic, nurturing, and healing. Okay, so this is who's coming into your life. This is like the end all be all. Okay, but it's this emperor is not going to be matched with anything less than an empress and vice versa. Now, listen, you attract what you are. So if you think of yourself as a king or a queen, you're not getting an emperor or an empress. You got to you, you have to you have to attract what you are, which means at the end of the day, it it's all up to you. You have to live your life in this energy. Okay? If you're not living that, if you're not living in that energy, if you're living in page energy, you're going to attract pages, immature energy. If you're living in night energy, you're going to attract night energy or princess energy. Do you understand what I mean? So at the end of the day, it all comes down to you. What are you doing with yourself? You've, you've, you've cut, you've cut things off. You've put the ax down. You said, that's it. You're done with toxic relationships. You're not going to just be done with a toxic relationship and then think you're just going to find Prince Charming. You're going to find your emperor or empress. You got to heal. You have to, because if you were an emperor and empress, you wouldn't have been in that toxic relationship to start. Point blank period. You never would have been in that. So it starts with you, my friend, my Virgo friend. It starts with you. So this emperor is coming in. Boom tower energy all right the emperor comes in and just shakes up your entire world some of you i see you just shaking at the knees like i don't know if i'm ready for this person i need to get busy what does that mean and we're not just talking about money i'm talking about all areas you know n none of that toxic unhealthy energy okay so if, listen if you've been smothering if you've been insecure Okay, if you've been greedy, if you've been financially dependent, if you've been unkind, or if you've been in any kind of um, been emotionally manipulative, or like the emperor, the empress does not put up with that shit. Absolutely. They do not, those types do not put up with that. So this emperor coming in, mighty attracted to you wants to get to know you it's going to be about more than just putting your best foot forward this is going to be about being what you preach being what you preach okay you can't be in that position of weak-mindedness you have a real opportunity you virgo you made it like i said a grand chess move you did something huge you got yourself, I always say, be careful what you wish for, because when you make grave, radical changes in your life to improve your life, spirit's going to come down. The universe is going to give you something magical. Be prepared to receive it. You can't be coming in in that past energy that you were in with somebody else from the past that was unhealthy and toxic. You have got to heal that. You have got to keep rising up to meet your other half right if you and if you're still 
if you haven't given the ax yet and and this relationship is toxic that you're still in and it's unhealthy and somebody's giving you the silent treatment and you're doing it back and there's breakups and makeups and separation and abandonment stuff going on and you haven't left that don't be bitching and complaining that you haven't met the love of your life because the way i see and i say this all the time if you have a ball in your hand okay this is your this is the toxic relationship you're holding on to that and then you know universe comes down and try to give you something well they can't because your hand's not open you have to let this go so that you can have an open hand, palm to receive look at this okay hmm <laughs> you know it's so funny i was saying to myself all right I said, I'm not going to mention anything about the past for you guys. I'm not going to say anything about the past because I have nothing here that's screaming past. And now the Six of Cups is here. So what does that mean for some of you? All right, for some of you, I'm going to put it out there. It really just means that you're cutting a relationship off and being done may have had a huge effect. You see... People only change under certain circumstances, okay? Number one, people change when there's consequences, right? Somebody, like for example, if somebody's out there doing crime, they're not going to stop doing crime until they eventually get caught, unless they're career crim criminals, and that's different. But they do something that's pretty bad. People don't usually have come-to-Jesus moments, epiphanies, wake up calls and stuff like that until something some consequence or some major thing has happened in their life okay this tower is a major thing and for some of you you walked away from a past relationship where you called it quits and i feel like that actually might have an effect on someone from your past that's kind of saying to them because male or female when there's a relationship that two people are in and they love each other but there's a growth problem or there's an issue with that sometimes just need to cut that relationship off and keep it moving for someone and not keep those lines of communication open any person that a relationship ends and they say they want can you just stay friends it's because that person just needs to keep you as a placeholder I had this discussion today with somebody that person wants to keep you as a placeholder just in case things don't work out in other areas of life or until they're ready or until they decide it's a lowball offer and it's an insult okay romantic relationships are not friendships friendships can turn into romantic relationships but if you were having a romantic relationship and somebody says well let's just be friends you've been demoted <laughs> no it's one or the other it's black or white we're going to be in a romantic relationship or we're not going to talk at all and we're going to be done you know i mean you have to draw lines somewhere so for some of you i feel like that's what you did you just boom gave it the axe that's it you're done you're not playing you'll find somebody who is going to be romantic with you i mean i don't know how many of you are trying to be friends with an ex that and not having sex anywhere in your life who the hell wants to have a sexless relationship with the opposite sex i mean can that just not be the most boring if you're still attracted to each other how the hell is that going to happen you know you're going to hook up again it's not it's not find somebody else that can not just you can hook up with but that you can have an actual loving romantic relationship with don't waste your time so i feel like with the six of cups there is an energy of someone thinking about you um still in the past thinking about memories here you might be as well but some of you this could be someone from your past returning i just have to say that i just have to say that let me say oh okay so we have scorpio pisces aries and we do have air energy okay so wow changed perspective changed point of view okay somebody's having a change point of i feel like both two people are okay i feel like two people are you know this isn't really i just kind of go with the flow with these readings this really isn't 
I, I really didn't name this, oh, this is going to be your X reading. I really didn't name it. It's going to be a singles reading. I, it was just whatever messages come out. So if you get confused, try to understand. Um, this can be somebody new, all right? But for a lot of you, this is all because we have the Ace of Swords. So this is like a new start here. Um, but for a lot of you, there could be a new start to this relationship where you needed to let it go, Virgo. You just needed to be done. As things are not progressing, you're just spinning your wheels and you're wasting your time. And I feel like there is somebody here who's having a wake up call like, holy shit, Virgo actually did it. Virgo walked away. Virgo just put the ax down, blocked, deleted, cut off, is moving on. And this person does have a feeling that maybe you've met somebody else that you're talking to somebody else. Okay. Look at that. The devil just peeked out real quick and then flipped back in. All right. This person, there's a lot of possessive energy. You know, what's interesting. I have to say this. So whenever I look at the hangman, this is a Pisces card. And Jesus, as one of the prophets, was in the year of, or the age of Pisces. So I always feel like this is Jesus on the cross, except, you know, the cross, right? Except he's upside down. Because the similarities are very much the same. And then you've got the devil, which obviously is the devil, okay? So I feel like there's some turmoil and conflict going on here and i feel like this is with you virgo because i feel like you're trying to just be healthy and clean and loving but virgo you got that side about you right here you got that devil that temptation that sexual lust you you got that you're a little conflicted here especially if someone from the past comes back because you have that physical mm -mm -mm with that person right very very toxic with that devil energy can be very tough. It's one of those situations. There's like addiction to each other, right? That that I feel like is what you had to put the axe down. But it's almost like for you, Virgo, quitting this person almost felt like withdrawing from a very heavy drug. This person was like heroin to you in a lot of ways. Um, and I and I don't know if you've ever done heroin. I certainly never have, so I'm not sure. But from what they say, that that's what I feel like this energy is, okay? Um, but I do feel like this person... Now, I'm going to put some clarifying cards on this. That's Capricorn energy there. I do feel like... Um, what do I want to use? Hold on. I do feel like this person is coming in like a changed person, but we're going to take a look. I'm going to clarify these cards here to see what this message is going on. Oh gosh, the Ace of Cups. Yeah, this person is coming in like love on the brain. They are inspired, inspired to have like this beautiful, loving, oh my goodness, my cup runneth over. You know, Virgo, for some of you that just walked away from this relationship or you ended it, man, this person is so attracted to you because of this. For a lot of you, I feel like that was this new perspective of, wow, how sexy it is that you stood up and said, F you, buddy. I don't need you. <laughs> I'm the shit. I can have anybody I want and anytime I want. Not that you're walking around flaunting because I don't really ever feel like Virgos are like that. I just feel like it's more of like a knowing, you know, like that in thing with you where you're just kind of like, you know what? I don't need to tell everybody that I can have who I know I can. <laughs> I really do. And I feel like you walking away is sexy and confident, definitely. And I feel like this is giving this person this, uh, like, who is this? Who is this person? Who does Virgo think Virgo is? Walk away from me like that. You know, I'm, I'm the I'm the emperor or the empress. Like, who's, who does Virgo's like, you ain't nothing. You're nothing. Who are you? You're coming in here not giving me anything, giving me silent treatment and abandoning me breaking up, coming back, you know, uh, I'm done with this pattern. I don't know what your issue is, but look, right when I said that, <laughs> the six of swords, I'm moving on. Well, we're moving on up to the east side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. 
All right, let's see. Yeah, so this person is like getting up some courage. That's the six of the six of swords energy, being brave, going towards the light. You know what I mean? Like making this transition. They know. This person knows. Yeah, you're moving on up like Georgia Wheezy. This person knows that in order to be with you, they got to rise. They got to rise to the occasion. Right? So maybe you guys, I think I said this in my reading yesterday. Virgo, somewhere along the line, you like for some of you, you outgrew this. You said, nope, this is not going to work. You, you've outgrown. You're, some of you are going on dates. You are meeting other people. I don't know if you're in another relationship right now. You could be. Um, but you're definitely in flirtation mode. You're definitely testing the waters. You're definitely seeing who else is out there. What else is out there for you? You know, um, somebody asks you on a date. I see you going. Um, asks you to dinner or drinks. Like I said, there could be a work thing going on. And you're like, yep, I'll meet you. Absolutely. Because you're just not playing anymore. I told you, Cupid's Arrows is coming in. Some of you are going, you get asked to go on some kind of like um, vacation, tropical vacation, or go to go to the islands. Um, I don't know if it's like Cancun or somewhere in Mexico. Uh, some of you are going Ecuador, I just heard. I don't even know where that is. I'm so bad with geography. Um, you know, like the Keys, like somewhere out there, the... the uh, all the, what are those? The names keep popping up in my head. I just heard James, St. James or something like that. Going on some trips, you're just, you're flying, you're, you know, going to the pools, going to resorts. I don't know what you're doing, but you're doing it. Let me see. What is this tower card here? Oh, <gasps> shit. You got the lovers. <laughs> This person is going to come in and just boom, they're going to drop the bomb on you that they want to be with you. They love you. They are in love with you. This could be the new person as well. Okay. But somebody is coming in here. You are, look, I want to get naked with you. I want us to be vulnerable with each other. I want us to spend time together, you know, in the Garden of Eden, naked and picking fruit and strawberries and apples from the trees. I want to do this. This person's like, this on fire for you okay this is this is like complete and utter abandon of self to to two people to each other this is a real deep love um so that's gemini energy there <laughs> okay with the devil listen um boy listen you two can't this is like virgo it's just maybe too overwhelming for you the physical attraction the lust is so and crazy strong this person feels it too they can't picture you with somebody else and even a new person coming in here that attraction somebody's coming in with an apology but that attraction it's a very possessive energy like no somebody does not want to see you with anyone else and i kind of feel like you don't either in some ways right which is fine but a very strong there's capricorn gemini scorpio energy here the tower the lovers and the devil oh my gosh this is like this is very also very phallus symbol very physical phallus symbol i mean this is just it's powerful it feels so powerful let me just take a look here all right so then i want to look at the six of cups Oh, wow. Eight of Pentacles here. And we have the Eight of Pentacles in the beginning. You know, for some of you, this is really all about your past person. Seriously. Or the person you're currently talking to right now, I have to tell you. Um, because some of you, maybe you work with this person or you're going to meet this person at work or this is your past person shows up at your work as well. You might have a couple things going on here. Let me see what the, what is the hangman? Okay. Oh man, you're a wish come true. Oh my goodness. This person just wants to indulge, get lost within you. I feel like, um, for a lot of you, there was restrictions and there couldn't be a connection. 
that was that needed to be made here look at this this is all about self-imposed prisoner this is all about restrictions maybe it was pandemic stuff but somebody was just sabotaging a connection okay self-sabotage it could have been you you may have had like you have a new perspective or some kind of a wake-up call about relationships at this time this person does okay especially if you were connecting with a pisces pisces is really waking up really seeing things differently now it's like holy i was the one that ruined this not virgo wow this is insane this is totally insane i want to pull another card for the devil um and the lovers I just feel like, oh my gosh, Ace of Swords, we keep getting the same cards. So, you know, you just can't make this up. I, there's just clarity. This person, this Emperor energy, and please forget, I don't mean to be harsh on you, Virgo. It's just that, like, you have to get, you have to take control of your life. You know, I'm, a, I'm born in the year of the rooster, and we just don't fuck around, and we just don't care what anybody thinks. You know, we just get out there and boast and take off and just do get our feathers out there because we know we're the shit. And sometimes, um, you know, people shoot at us, and sometimes people go after us, and sometimes we put our foot in our mouth, but we don't care because we just know that we got to go and get what we need to get in order to be happy for ourselves, right? And and not everybody's a rooster. I know dragons understand that energy a bit, but I feel like you guys, you can't live, if you constantly live your life where all you think is that people are always hurting you, you're always in that state and you can never get ahead, it's because you're letting it happen. Listen to me when I tell you, there's an old saying and it still rings true. People cannot take advantage of you unless you let them. How do you not let them? You have to have your wits about you. You have to be clear-minded at all times. And the only time you're not clear-minded is when you fall in love because when love comes in, you totally lose all your common sense and that happens, you know, and it's okay because you're human. But this, at the end of the day, you got to be clear with yourself because there's, there's, you just can't walk through life with your heart guarded or your heart not guarded um, with people who don't deserve to have your heart until they prove it why giving everybody like what do we live in like some kind of oh like free for all here you know there's a reason i say this your heart your brain and your lungs are all protected in your body your heart and your lungs are vital organs that's why there's a rib cage around them. Your brain is a vital organ. That's why there's a whole hard skull around it. Without your thoughts, your emotions, and your um, your breath, you you died. You die. Even your spinal cord is protected in your spine. You know, all of these things are crucial. So why are you walking around with your heart out? completely on your sleeve at all times it, you're, it does not make you noble to be walking around like oh you're some great person because you have a good heart you can be nice and kind and be respectful to people but your heart is valuable it's a very very valuable look at how people need a heart transplant look how valuable the heart is value your heart protect your heart and stop giving it away to people because there people can be cruel Wait until you know. Trust yourself and trust that person, right? So let's get in now. Let me see here. All right, we're going to do some Moon Pie Tarot cards. This feels more like a preach set session than anything else, but I really feel like, Virgo, a lot of you are getting it, and it makes me so happy when I get calls from you guys and I hear, you know what? I've made a, I made a big decision. I love that person, but I know my worth, and I'm doing something different about it. I feel so inspired when I hear that, you know, and then those people who call me for readings and they tell me they've done this, then in like the end of the month, they're calling me because they've met this great new person because they valued themselves and they're so in love and they're so happy and it's real. It feels real to them and, and they've healed or they've taken their time to set themselves straight and see what they need in their life rather than 
walking around people pleasing all the time. They've actually said, hey, wait a minute, everybody just out of my room. I need some time to myself. I got to figure out what my needs are. Like I said today, I was like, you know, when you all go to the grocery store, I mean, you got a list, right? You write down on your list. You say, okay, well, let me see. This is what I need and this is what I need and that's what I need and that's what I need. And then you go to the grocery store and you get the things that you need. And sometimes the things that you need aren't on the shelf. So you say, okay, well, let me just hold off on that for a minute or let me see if there's something equivalent. You don't usually go for less, right? You don't usually go for less. You look for the equivalent. So, you know, when you're going out dating, you're meeting people, where's your freaking grocery list? And I'm not talking like, listen, don't go in dating people with like a hundred, a hundred items on your list because then you're perfectionist. You need to like narrow that shit down, you know, but the basics, know what you need before you go in talking to people. Don't, don't go into a relationship and fall in for someone who's like a rescuer or a project because how are you going to get your needs met? Who's going to fund that? <laughs> Who's funding that project? You are? With what? <laughs> I'm just playing. We're having fun here. All right, let me see. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, tonight, I don't even know what it is. You know what? I've really stepped up my workouts at the gym. Like I always go to the gym, but I've really been kick going hard. And I'm just, I'm like, I have so much energy because I, I go and I work out before I do the readings. And I'm like, <laughs> you know that, that adrenaline rush and all that, that, that hormone rush? I'm like, damn, I'm awesome. <laughs> all right, stop. Stop it, Cal. All right, secure home. Hitting rock bottom. Ooh. Okay. Mm, temperance energy here. Material gift. I just saw that as material girl. That Remember that old Madonna song? Some of y'all need to listen to that. Because you need to get into that energy. That material girl energy. <laughs> and I don't know. Maybe some of you just need to find yourselves a sugar daddy and be done with all this romance. Like seriously. What did, um, Kath, was it you? Or somebody said in the in the chat, I think yesterday, we need readings for people over 50. Well, here you go. Go get yourself a sugar daddy. Go get yourself a boy toy. There you go. What are you messing around now at this age? You had your kids. You did all that. You were probably married. You had all that. Now you should be having fun. What are you, what are you wasting your time for? <laughs> you trying to get married or get into another relationship and play house again and be a servant? No, you need to go on adventures and start having fun living your life, putting in effort. Okay, so I feel like some of you are getting a home. You're buying a new home. Okay, some of you are just hitting rock bottom. Probably have to listen to my reading and my ranting here. Hidden rock bottom, like, yeah, that's it. Okay, Sagittarius energy, peace, spirit, asking spirit to work in your life. Okay, things start happening behind the scenes. Trust that God is working your life even when you feel discouraged. Be patient and trust but keep moving forward, okay? Um, material gift, this is all about your investments. So you, some of you are getting a new job, maybe a raise or a promotion. Um, you're investing in stocks, you're doing crypto, NFTs, whatever, and you've got new income coming in here for you as well. And putting in effort is just, you know what? It's you, it's you. You're learning new skill as well. Some of you are um, seeing like counselors or you're learning, getting some life coaching, relationship coaching. You're learning some new things. You're putting in some serious effort into something that you're doing in your life at this time. And you're going to be successful at it. And last but not least, you have a love offer coming in, okay? And I think we saw that in that last reading. This is for those of you, if you're not resonating with the last reading, this is like basically what's going on for you here. So you may have somebody new coming in. Could be a Sagittarius coming in for you. Um, moving into a new home. That might be a gift that you're receiving, that material gift. Somebody might be... I don't know, maybe you're selling your home or buying a home. There's some connection to real estate. And then there is also a connection to uh, material things like luxuries, cars, homes, um, items, okay? Um, shiny new things, money as well, something of value, okay? And also, um, 
a new job of some sort, maybe like putting in effort as well. You could be learning a new skill at the job or starting a new job. This hitting rock bottom though, what is this about? Okay, reflect, wow. All right, so some of you are uh, definitely going into that energy where you're just like, wow, I've been spending a lot of time reflecting, trying to figure things out. I'm really, I, I know you're getting clarity. Things are getting crystal clear, but I feel like, uh, for some of you, you need to tell people you need to take a vacation so you can clear your head. Some of you are going to tell people, listen, I need a little time to myself because I'm going into hermit mode, typical Virgo fashion. Virgos don't just run, Virgos don't run away and hide. When Virgo goes into hermit mode, they're there for a purpose. Everything that Virgo does is for a purpose. And Virgo is also a repurposer. So Virgo will <laughs> spend time taking up you know, digging up bones out of the grave to repurpose them because damn it, something has to mean something. They're, these things cannot go to waste. So I feel like you're, you know, going in for that hermit energy. You're just spending a little time on your own. You're going at things alone, um, staying in the stillness. You're not getting lost. I don't feel like you're going to have, anybody's going to have to send like, a, um, what do you call it? Um, P P B. BPB, I don't know what it's called. One of those things where they got to go looking. I think you're going to tell people, listen, I just need to be alone for a little while. Everything's fine. I'm taking a vacation. I need a recharge so I can just hit rock bottom and then just kind of rebuild again. And it's good. It's real positive. Who's this love offer coming in from? Okay, Leo also showing up here. Some kind of Leo coming in, making some plans with you. Um, positive vibes here. We also have a Gemini. Okay, the struggle is over with a Gemini. Um, new plans evolving with a Leo. Okay, that challenge, competition, that struggle you were going through with feels like a Gemini is, is going to be done here. Okay, good news about money and an emotional wish being granted. Hanging out with some friends as well, socializing. Um, you have a lot of fear and anxiety, but you have to just keep pushing forward. You're enduring a lot, but just keep pushing forward. Things are going to get better. Life is never, life is never linear. It's never stagnant. Change is permanent. It constantly shifts and changes. If things aren't changing in your life, it's because you're not going with the flow. You're not allowing. You're not creating. You're not building, right? If you're in a very stagnant energy, and you like being there, well, more power to you. But I don't know any Vir Virgo is a mutable sign. Virgo is all about change. Virgo is all about adapting. Virgo is when the seasons change. Okay. Virgo is not winter. Um, excuse me. Or the fall. Um, well, Virgo, actually, Virgo is. So Virgo is in the seasonal changes is what I mean to say, which is the spring and the fall. The summer and the winter are the main seasons. The spring and the fall are transitional seasons. So Virgo, you are in transitional season, okay, always until October and, or I'm sorry, till the end of September. So that means that as a mutable sign, you function best in adaptability and change. You do not like restrictions. You do not like being restricted. You do not like people who are fixed or severely restricted because they are, you just don't get along with them generally, not for a relationship. It's too, they're too stubborn that you have to like dance around them all the time. If you've been involved with anyone who was too restrictive or too stubborn or stuck, you probably felt like you were dancing around that person, like, like the waves on the cliff, you know, not healthy for you. All right, let me take a look here and see. Usually the signs that go best, um, with Virgo are Capricorns. Um, Virgos, Virgos, and, and I just mean like in a love relationship in that way, because Capricorns are cardinal. You go good with Aries. You're, you're pretty good with cardinal signs, but it just depends, right? Really, it, it like, it's hard to really deem too strongly 
um, because without a natal chart, you know, you really got to dive deep. But for general purposes, Capricorns are usually good. Aries are usually good for you. Um, let me think. You get along with Geminis because they're a lot like you and Pisces in the fluidity, the uh, in the changeability, even Sagittarians. I don't know about them for love relationships. <laughs> Maybe friendships are better. Um, the fixed signs of Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Taurus. That's tough for you. Okay. They get along better with you than you do with them. All right. Let me see. So daffodils. They're giving me lots of daffodils. And somebody's standing in line in a bank. I'm just hearing, are you in line at a bank or will be or in a, a pharmacy? Something. <laughs> I'm seeing a pharmacy, like a line with rope or something you got to line up or an amusement park or one of those places with with ropes and a path you got to line up to be up next i'm just hearing that wherever that might be for you or maybe you're heading to a place that has that or you just left a place that has that okay april for sure some of you have four job opportunities coming up for you four keep that in mind okay so we have the letter P. Um, somebody OJ. Somebody's name is OJ, or nickname, or their letters O. Or, so we have O, and then we have J, and we have the letter P. Somebody always uses those blue butterfly, blue butterfly emojis. Okay. Um, all right, somebody's picking up something right now. They just told me. Picking up, picking, you're picking, picking somebody up or picking up something or somebody. Like maybe you're in your car, you have to go pick somebody up. You're listening to this on your way. Uh, or pick something up from the store or somewhere. All right, let me see. K and a G. Okay, we got September 11th. This we also have a birth date. We have so we have the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 17th, the 4th. Okay, <laughs> the 2nd, the 7th, the 3rd. Um, all right, I'm just seeing somebody is high right now. <laughs> they just told me. We have the letters. Uh, oh, I just heard. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Okay, I just heard. This is going to sound weird, but you know the sound that a pirate makes? And he goes, arr. <laughs> I just heard that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe somebody has an eye patch on or you know, something to do with a pirate. Okay. That's so strange. What else? Okay, we have the sixth. Okay. Okay. Um. So we have somebody has a PhD or is getting their PhD. I just heard. Uh, Gigi. I just heard the name Gigi or Gina or Gigi. I always hear Gina in my readings. I don't know why. I absolutely do not have any friends by the name of Gigi. Um, okay, somebody getting a GoPro or has a GoPro. Um, I just heard that. Somebody has a GoPro. And then I just heard somebody's kid has a G.I. Joe. Do they even make them anymore? G.I. Joe Rangers or something? Maybe you drive a Rove Ranger, wrote a, rain, a Range Rover. Is that what it is? They just said Range Rover. Okay. Um, okay, somebody, either you were, you are, or you will be sitting on um, like a balcony looking out over the water with like a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. Balcony sitting high up on a balcony overlooking some water. I'm just seeing that image. Okay. 
Okay. We have the eighth. Somebody's birthday is the eighth. Um, oh, and somebody drinks uh, seven and seven. A drink seven and seven. Like seven and seven. What is that? Seagram seven. Gin and gin and soda. Sipping that gin and juice. <laughs> Wasn't Snoop, jo Snoop Dogg just on the Super Bowl halftime? You know, it's so funny. Like, my son, he's 26. And the next day I was like, so what'd you think of the halftime show? And he goes, there's a bunch of old people up there. At like a ballroom, you know, 90s dance. It <laughs> was like, are you kidding? Are you kidding? I said, well, Eminem was, he's like, I know. The only one that was there was, um, like, there was a, I forget the dude's name, like, the younger guy. Um, kid? I don't forget his name. But he's like, well, you got Snoop, you got Dr. Dre, you got Mary J. Blige, you have Eminem. He's like, what is this shit? <laughs> He's like, it was like senior night at the Super Bowl. <laughs> I was like, come on, you know that's good music, right? You know that that's a really good song. He's like, I'm not saying the songs are bad. He's like, but come on. Like, they look like they were going to have a heart attack or like hurt their knee or something <laughs> up there. They weren't even really moving. <laughs> I can't, like I can't because I, I find it's hilarious. You know, in the younger generation, like, they make fun of my age group. You know, because, you know, for those of us who are in our 50s. But it's just funny, because I remember being that way when I was in my 20s. You know, my dad was trying to get me to listen to, like, that, I don't know, 60, 50s music. And I was like, what is this? Why are they dancing like that? That's so weird. All right, enough. I keep getting the letter P. Oh, PG, they just said. PG, maybe something is PG. I know my readings aren't PG. They're R rated. So something with PG and uh, okay, that's all they're telling me. Let me take a look. Oh, I'm seeing some dog paws, doggy paws. Too. You looking at your doggy's paws or something? All right, let's see. What the hell is this? Oh, we have a little heart. It's a. It's like um. It's an ace of hearts, or is it the king of hearts? Like a deck of cards, like a playing card. The king of hearts. Oh, that's the king of hearts. The king of hearts in the playing card deck is the king of cups. Actually, king of cups right here. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. So, might be showing up in your life. Okay. We also have Aquarius, so don't worry about that. Pisces. Yeah, I said that. Let's see. What else? Oh. Oh, a little blue Cinderella pumpkin. Okay, somebody's having a little boy. That's a little, you're having a little boy pumpkin. Okay, there's a pregnancy. Um, there's a, it's a little boy is coming, going to be born. Um, we'll be born in March. Um, I'm hearing March 6th. There could be a March 6th or 7th. Um, yeah, March 6th, 7th, maybe the 4th, maybe the 3rd. Okay. Oh, and they're just giving me area codes here. Oh, look, two hearts. Definitely. There's a marriage coming up. Okay. Nope, they're not giving me area codes, but I am also getting March 9th. So I feel like in that week of March, there's a little boy, there's a there's a birth coming. And those are the dates. Okay, what the hell is this? Oh, it's a dove, peace. Somebody's coming in to make peace with you, Virgo. Yes, somebody's coming in to make peace with you. The king of hearts. Oh. Look at that. We've got a mask that I can't pick up because my freaking nails are too long. Okay, look. Oh, that's what it is. Somebody was coming in who was wearing a mask. Is dropping the mask. Dropping the mask. Because the mask is off. 
Somebody's coming in and dropping the mask to make peace with you, make change. You also have the four leaf clover here. So somebody might be Irish or from Ireland. It's a very lucky time. All right, I'm going to get one more. Okay, we got the yin yang symbol. Beautiful. Um, this is a match. Two polar opposites come together, they blend. They create a whole new world together. It's very pretty. Maybe you have a yin yang somewhere around you, a, a, a pendant or a necklace of some sort, a yin yang pendant or necklace, um, or two hearts intertwined kind of pendant thing I'm seeing here. Maybe even a shamrock. I, I'm feeling like some pendants. I don't know if you're going to a jewelry show or a craft show or something. Maybe you'll be seeing these. Maybe you're making them or creating them as well. There might be like some tiaras and masks that are connected to whatever you're doing or wherever you're going. Something that you're seeing here. Um, you might not be making any of these. You might just pass a shop that has these that you're walking down the street through town or something or a city street or something and you see that. Um, Maybe you're looking for, I feel like I see somebody walking down the street, you're looking for something, either an address or you're trying to, you're, you're wanting to purchase something and you're looking, you're trying to find something. This is what I feel like is happening here. Maybe you're online, you're browsing like Amazon or something, you're looking for something right now. You're searching for a particular item, maybe for a baby or a shower or a wedding or just you're shopping in general. Okay, I think that's it. We've hit the hour anyway. So those are your messages. Again, you guys don't forget to go over to the forum, oversoul.space. The link is in the description box below. It tells you everything's a spiritual community board. Hop on over there. People are already, already over there posting. Um, they've already signed up, they're registered, and they're already posting in the topics, creating their own topics as well, which is cool for everyone to respond to. Their spiritual talk, tarot talk, relationships, dating, trauma, uh, bad relationships, movies, music, gaming, all kinds of stuff, photo thread, whatever you want to just join in and have fun, get to know other people. Um, and you can create your own topics and, you know, whatever you want to talk about. It's all for you guys. I'm not, it's like my forum, but I'm not, you know what I mean? Like you guys are running it, not me. So definitely go over and check it and invite your friends. It's really cool. We're going to try and build something really cool here. All right, you guys, again, personal reading link below. Check it out, um, $50 off a 30-minute reading, phone call reading. And, um, yeah, that's going to be it. So I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you for being in the chat. I love you guys. Bye, Virgo. Take care.